That's the reaction from many of you tonight as the monsoon rolls right into the valley, bringing strong winds, rain, and some lightning. Thank you for choosing us. I'm Lori Jane Gleha. Meteorologist Amber Sullins is joining me tonight. She's been tracking these storms. And Amber, kind of a crazy night for all of us yes. out there. All right, thanks a lot, Amber. And we want to turn it over now to ABC 15's Jennifer Parks, who's been chasing these storms all night. And Jen, first of all, where are you and what's it like where you are? A lot of you grabbing your cameras and snapping some incredible pictures of this storm. Take a look at this photo sent to us from Jacob D in Desert Ridge. Sherry Michelson sent us this picture from Anthem and she tells us there was lots of thunder and lightning in her neck of the woods. Also, here's a picture of the storm clouds rolling in in Gilbert earlier tonight. Nicole Cuellar sent us this picture and we have one last photo to share with you. Eric Velez took this picture facing north towards Anthem from Dixaletta overpass on I-17. And you can send us your weather photos. Just log on to abc15.com and click Submit News. New details tonight giving us a clear picture as to how this SUV ended up hitting a house near 19th Avenue in Rozier. Investigators tell us a 19-year-old girl was teaching her boyfriend how to drive when for some reason he lost control, crossed over the other lane of traffic, and hit the house. Two people inside the home, a 78-year-old woman and a 26-year-old caregiver, were hurt. This is crazy. Right now, both women are in serious condition. The people who were riding in the car are doing just fine. New tonight, the mother of that 10-year-old girl who died in a plastic box says she found out about the incident by reading it online. This, according to the Arizona Republic, Shirley Deal told the paper she got out of what she called an abusive house several years ago, leaving her daughter behind. Deal says she knows three of the four people accused of killing her daughter, and she wants them to suffer a similar fate. Witnesses say 10-year-old Amy Deal's caretakers put her in that box where she died at least five times in recent months. Court records also show Amy suffered beatings with a wooden paddle and she was forced to eat dog feces. The people charged with the crimes are also family members. Right now, investigators are trying to figure out what killed a woman in Flagstaff. A driver saw the woman lying on the ground and noticed she wasn't breathing, so the driver called 911 and started CPR, but the woman never regained consciousness. Police don't know how she died. The victim is described as an Indian female in her late teens or early 20s. She was wearing multiple wrist bracelets. Anybody with information is asked to call police. Just north of Flagstaff, near the Grand Canyon, searchers found two people dead inside the wreckage of a crash plane. The plane was flying from South Carolina to Nevada. Just before the crash, one of the men on board sent a text message to his wife saying he'd be in Henderson in about 90 minutes. Crews don't know what caused the crash. A scare in a Phoenix neighborhood today when the bomb squad was called in to investigate a suspicious device. It happened on North 16th Avenue in Desert Cove. Police evacuated nearby homes and apartments as a precaution, but the reported ticking device found underneath the vehicle turned out to be just a car part. Scottsdale police investigating an overnight fire that may have been set by a woman trying to kill herself. Fire crews say she started a fire while three other people were inside the home, and when they noticed the smoke, they tried to rescue her. The woman regained consciousness outside of the home, but then she ran back inside. That's when fire crews arrived and they were able to rescue her again. She was taken to the hospital for smoke inhalation. Continuing coverage of a triple homicide in Phoenix. Police found two women strangled to death inside their home last December, and one of the women was pregnant. Investigators are still looking for leads, and today family and friends distributed flyers and memorial bracelets in memory of Nicole Glass, Melissa Mason, and Melissa's unborn child. The community needs to come together on this. If you have information about the murders, call 480-WITNESS. Congress burning the midnight oil in Washington tonight, trying to break the stalemate over extending the nation's debt ceiling. Tuesday night, the government loses its power to borrow money. There will still be some funds from taxes to pay some bills, but not all, unless Democrats and Republicans come to terms on raising the U.S. debt limit. And it's not done yet. Sources tell ABC News Republicans and the White House have reached a tentative framework to end the debt ceiling crisis. The deal would raise the debt ceiling by $2.8 trillion with spending cuts of roughly $1 trillion. And there would be a special committee to recommend additional cuts. If Congress does not approve the committee's recommendation by late December, automatic across-the-board cuts go into effect. I'm confident and optimistic. The deal under discussion would also require Congress to vote on a balanced budget amendment to the Constitution.
All right, Cardinals getting in their first practice today in Flagstaff as they prepare for the upcoming season. But the practices in Flagstaff aren't just important for the players. It's a big part of the Flagstaff community. ABC 15 Steve Cooge is live in Flagstaff at the Cardinals practice field tonight. And Steve, just how much money does this training camp cost? ABC 15 News. All right, thanks, Steve. And right now the Cardinals trying to tie up loose ends and get their roster under wraps. Our team coverage from Flagstaff continues now with sports director Craig Fui. Hey, Craig, it sounds like the Cardinals have officially signed their first round draft pick. Lori Jane. All right, sounds like a lot of fun. Thanks, Craig. You bet. Tonight, one year after three inmates escaped from a Kingman prison, we're seeing major changes at the facility. For the first time, we take you inside the prison grounds to show you why officials believe this will never happen again. The sharp razor wire at the edge of these fences and awnings is intended to be an intimidating warning to prisoners. It's a new addition to the facility here after Tracy Province, John McCluskey, and Daniel Renwick broke free last July. They cut through a perimeter fence with the help of an accomplice. The breakout eventually led to the murders of a husband and wife in New Mexico before authorities recaptured each prisoner and the woman who helped them escape. The local communities can feel extremely confident. That, that facility is one of the most secure facilities not only in the state of Arizona, but also in the entire nation. Odie Washington is the senior vice president of the private company that runs the Arizona State Prison at Kingman. He says officials there have been upgrading every month to improve security. They've enhanced the alarm system, which wasn't working properly during last year's escape, and they've added guards. Instead of one security officer patrolling the perimeter, there are now five. In March of this year, the Arizona Department of Corrections indicated that we had thoroughly fixed all of the problems that were associated with the escape. Washington told us they've also added an additional perimeter fence, a new checkpoint, and an extra road around the facility to divert traffic from the prison. He says he's confident the problems that led to last year's escape will never happen again.